We were asked to see a patient who had had significant blood loss after a thoracentesis uh, by our thoracic surgery colleagues. And uh, you can see you know, an obvious reason why this patient was uh, having problems with this massive subcutaneous hematoma. This patient had lots of comorbidities and thoracic surgery really felt like trying to track down uh, a bleeding source and amongst this hematoma would be uh, somewhat fruitless. So they asked us to see if we could get any option uh, for embolization here. Uh, I was a little doubtful, but uh, as we went over the CAT scan, the radiologist did think that this white streak represented some evidence of active extravasation. And when we uh, took this and we uh, reconstructed it, uh, it really it did look like you could identify uh, the bleeding source and a potential feeding intercostal artery. And that gave us some hope that if you fuse these images, we may be able to catheterize that intercostal artery. Mm. Uh, remember the anatomy is that the intercostal artery comes off posteriorly and divides into the, uh, the posterior and the costal and it gives off this collateral branch. The main uh, trunk runs along the inferior margin of the, of the rib above. So uh, we're fortunate to have great on-site support um, uh, and you know, we spent some time looking through this CAT scan, uh, convinced this was the bleeding source here. And as you can see, there's an intercostal artery right above this. And so when you work in multiplanar reconstruction, you can actually trace that artery and you can start marking the course of that artery. And the whole idea is that, that we mark it in the CT scan on the workstation and then fuse these images together. And that at least allows us to identify the likely level at which the intercostal is coming off the aorta. Now, I've not done many of these, um, tried a variety of different catheters to get in there, actually tried to burn going from below, and again, I've got an obvious target here and still had trouble accessing it. Um, the green line, of course, represents the fused image of the course of the intercostal artery, and I'll show you just how accurate some of this fusion actually is. We then turned around and tried to reform the Simmons, it's obviously too big. Um, and it wasn't until uh, the recommendation of one of the new radiologists, we got this uh, this MIK catheter, which they use for catheterizing um, intercostals when looking at spinal AVMs. And with a little help, this was manipulated down into position. Again, the fusion certainly helps in this particular situation if it's accurate. And we'll give you an example of just how accurate this actually is. And here you can see the catheter <coughs> is... Uh, engaged and what we're going to do is then do an on-table angiogram pop back out and we're going to shoot the angiogram and there there it is and you can see the act of extravasation occurring you know at the end of this so number one fusion was remarkably effective number two once again it's always about getting the right tool um, we always use the word the other guys toolkit now talk to the right people um, give you the right catheter and life became fairly easy at that particular point in time. We then took a renegade microcatheter and that renegade was uh, tracked out as you'll see here and along this um, fused you now roadmap image and the microcatheter was tracked out into the distal vessel and catheter popped out one more time, had to be re-engaged but it was pretty easy to re-engage it actually with the right catheter. Mm. So once we get re-engaged, this microcatheter was then advanced um, out into the intercostal artery. And then we'll show you there's a microcatheter, uh, you know, is out here. I've got this inset for a septal balloon because it's very useful when you're working with onyx. You can, you can actually fix it. Now again, you're injecting through this uh, micro, through the microcatheter, and you can see the active extravasation. So we opted to use um, the... Uh, Renegade and inject onyx, and I actually I think we switched over for natural one at this point in time. So we use the natural one microcatheter, and the reason I put the scepter in there is because if this is close to the order, you can actually inflate this balloon. Now the scepter balloon is recommended for working with um, uh, onyx because it stops at uh, passing retrograde and into non-target vessels. So with the with the actual one in place, and you see that the onyx is injected. And that onyx injection took no time. The whole artery is now full of onyx. So.
and we'll show you a completion angiogram. That's right, so just a cast of the entire artery, which has now been filled with uh, onyx. And the bleeding stopped. Um, the hematoma was never evacuated. Of course, they got black and blue top to bottom for a period of time. Um, but this was an incredibly effective way of uh, dealing with this problem. It has been reported before. There's uh, several uh, reports of bleeding from parasyntesis. And I think it's well worthwhile uh, being aware of this particular option. Um, and it's just getting the right catheter and uh, wire combination. Thank you.